What's up guys, welcome back to Title Gardens. It's been a hot minute since my last update, I know. There has been a lot happening with my tank lately, some stuff that I have been wanting to do for a long time and some things that I didn't think I would ever do. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it. So what you may be able to see already is there are a lot, and I mean a lot of new corals. I've kind of reached that point in the hobby where I'm not as hesitant to put corals in my tank anymore. I am used to thinking about new livestock additions like they are fish, where you don't want to add a whole bunch at once because of how much bio load they can add. Uh, corals actually don't have that problem though. Before I'd put maybe three to five in at a time, wait to see how they did over a month or so, and then rinse and repeat. Now I'm just like, get all the corals in my tank immediately. I want them all. And when you're surrounded by some amazing corals all day, it's pretty easy to kind of give in to that sort of temptation. So right now, working from right to left in my tank, we have a neon green candy cane frag that I have actually added more rock for in the sand bed. I haven't fully secured it to the rock. I might in the future, I might not, no idea. For right now, the little plug stem is just kind of jammed mediocrely into a hole in the rock. And I just kind of hope that it stays there. I really don't want to fully commit to securing it because I might want to move it around in the future, depending on certain things in my tank. So I just kind of hope that this works out. Next up, we have some Microgoniopora or Bernard Pora. The whole naming system in this hobby is just super confusing. Either way, it's the sunburst color variety of whatever this is. <laughs> I like the type of movement that these types of corals provide. It isn't really flowy looking, it's more fluffy, which is nice because it's able to break up the big movement provided by a lot of the bigger corals like my Duncans without being super stagnant. And also while we're on the Ganyapora train, my next new coral is this Miss Piggy Ganyapora, just to add a bit of neon fun to this muted section that we have kind of going on over here with the Duncans and the Alveopora. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to put over on this little ledge over here, but I don't want to block out any light from the candy cane colony that it's going to end up growing here if I keep it here. So I'll just have to go with an encrusting coral of sorts. So I guess we'll see. Next up, we have the archways to which I've added a freak hair pavona that I've wanted to add for quite a while. I mean, look at those colors. I needed to have this in my tank. I've also added a neon orange Montipora setosa over here as well. I'm super excited to see how this setosa grows out right here for multiple reasons. One, uh, we really don't have any huge colonies of this coral here, so I don't know entirely what this is supposed to look like. So it'll be a nice little fun surprise as this thing keeps growing. And also it'll kind of break up this whole encrusting train that we have going across both of these archways. So it'll just add a little bit more body to this dead space hole that we have going on over here. Then finally over here, I've added a rainbow pectinia, which at the moment looks a little rough. I'm aware of this. <laughs> Believe me, I know. I'm, I'm devastated with how this is turning out and I'm trying everything in my power to get it to bounce back. <laughs> we have a bit of recession happening on the bottom here but hopefully the changes that I've made to the tank recently help with that. I'll get into those specifics in a bit, but hey, if I can bring this Fivites back from the dead, I'm pretty confident that my luck won't stop at this Pectenia. Although I have been wrong before, rest in peace, my electric Oompa Loompa zoanthids. So who knows, maybe this hobby will make me feel like a failure yet again. When it comes to my older corals, I haven't actually looked back at the progress that they have made since I think October or November when I first put them in. And looking at this now, it's incredibly satisfying. The growth is minimal in some cases, but it's still cool to see. The fastest grower in my opinion has to be the Favites and the Duncans. The Favites has really bounced back after that initial shock and all of its color has been restored along with some pretty good growth, all things considered. And the Duncans are just bushier than ever. I sorta knew that they had gotten some growth since putting them in the tank because like they obviously do look bigger, but I didn't realize it was this much growth. <laughs> so I'm very happy with how big these guys have gotten. 
Moving on to the other animals in my tank, we have a few changes, not a lot, just a couple. So currently I've been seeing more vermitted snails than I would really enjoy. Vermitted, vermitted. I've seen, I've heard multiple pronunciations and I don't know which one's right. So we're just gonna go with vermitted from here on out. So to combat this, I went and added two little bumblebee snails to kind of slurp those guys right up. Fingers crossed those cannibals don't go after my regular ninja star snails. That wouldn't be fun at all. But staying on the train of things with shells, you may also notice some random shell placement around the tank. Those are just for my little hermit crabs. They're getting close to growing out their original shells, and I also don't want them to go after my ninja star snails to steal their homes. So this is just preventative maintenance, so to speak. One of the crabs has already switched shells and moved into one of the really twisty, tall shells. So it's been funny watching him bop around the tank since it's uh, a lot more easy to see him. It's like those videos, if you've ever seen them, of people attaching balloons to their pet turtles that wander around the house. So you just kind of see this random floating balloon just slowly moving its way through the living room. <laughs> the biggest update in terms of fish and inverts, however, has to be this little dude, my orange shoulder tang. So right now, uh, the orange shoulder isn't super prominent. He's expressing his solid yellow juvenile colors right now, but he will eventually take on a two-tone gray body with a bright orange shoulder like this. And I'm really looking forward to documenting the, his gradual transition towards this stage. For right now, he's actually gonna be hanging out in quarantine for a little bit longer, just to make sure he doesn't have any parasites or conditions that could be passed on to my other fish. Now, moving on to some of the hardware updates that I've made to my tank recently. First off, you may have already noticed that I finally have power heads. The flow in this tank was always a bit lacking, and the plan was to get some AI Nero power heads, but because we still live in chip shortage land, they have been very hard to get. So in the meantime, two Ciche Voyager HPs have been installed on opposite ends of the tank to create more water movement, they're doing a great job, all things considered, and I'm cu curious to see how everything responds to more water movement in general. I would like to eventually get the Nero power heads because they are programmable. And on some of our other tanks, we do this thing with two pumps where we have one of the pumps ramp from zero to 100, while the other ramps down from 100 to zero. It creates this cyclone wave motion that travels back and forth slowly across the length of the tank. Another device on my list that I finally got to add is a dosing pump for alkalinity. Way back when my tank was finally fully cycled before I even added any corals or fish in here, I had noticed that my alkalinity never wanted to stay at the normal seven to eight DKH range. It always sat around 6.7 to 6.9 DKH. Even after I would add alkalinity solution myself, it would always dip back down. So this entire time I have been dosing alkalinity by hand every other day whenever I do my testing, but there are two problems with that for me. First, it is a little bit jarring on the tank for me to add it all at once every time that I do dose my tank. And ideally it should be done a little bit at a time. And then the second reason is that this is an office tank. This is not in my home. I do not live at Tidal Gardens. Um, and I am, so I am not here on the weekend to do any sort of dosing. So logically the only solution to this problem would be to get an automatic doser so that I no longer have to think about it and the corals can flourish without having to deal with the constant alkalinity dips. Circling back to the beginning of the video, I actually believe that this alkalinity dipping situation could possibly be part of the reason behind my pectinia receding on the bottom. It probably just didn't like the constant chemical fluctuations when it's not really used to that in our farming tanks. And some corals can be really sensitive to changes like that. There are some other factors as well, but I think this did play a role in why that coral just wasn't doing too good. So right now the pump is set to dispense one milliliter every hour for 10 hours for a total of 10 milliliters per day. And so far it seems to be doing a pretty good job of keeping the alkalinity levels where I want them to be. So it must be really great having all this new equipment, right? Well, from a tank health perspective, absolutely. But with more equipment comes more wires. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, that is just a power strip resting on a crate. No, I'm not proud of it. <laughs> After adding these updates, I figured it was finally time to update my cable management as well. What we use for a lot of our systems here in the new building are these adaptive reef boards that have spaces to screw in devices in the front and have a space for cables in the back so they aren't in a rat's nest on the floor. <laughs> so I ended up screwing in the power strip and the pump switch to the front of the board and then ran the cables through to the back. I realized after I had finished everything that I put the pump switch a bit too close to the power strip and it can't really come out now, but that's a problem for future Becca to handle. And even in the future, if I wanted to take it out for some reason, all I would have to do is simply unlatch the power strip and then slide out the controller. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. Then I just went ahead and propped the board up next to my sump. I do still eventually have to do something with this stray power head wire that spans the back of the tank, but at least now I have somewhat of an organized system for all of my wires that doesn't involve a floor. And that's the main takeaway from this whole ordeal. <laughs> what I will probably do with this little wire here in the future is just use a length of J channel across the back of the tank to organize the wiring. And the J channel that we have is black, so it would basically be invisible against the back of the stand. So moving on to the favorite part of this hobby, pests. The Aptasia have not left. Not that that shocks anybody, these things could survive a nuclear bomb. I still want to see how peppermint shrimp do in this tank, but I will still have to wait a bit to get those until our next animal order. I was trying to hold off their advances by using this calcium magnesium solution. However, we recently did run out and I was just so tired of looking at these spawns of Satan that I just slapped some putty over every polyp that I could reach. The only Aptasia that I couldn't get were the ones that made a home in my zoanthids and the ones that were growing in the clownfish forest of aggression. I didn't want to deal with that. Those will eventually meet their demise when a peppermint shrimp is added. So until then, Maybe if I pretend I don't see them, they will just go away. Although there is another pest that has been directing my attention away from the Aptasia and that's the vermitted snails. I noticed a few of them uh, a few months ago and didn't think too much of it because there was only like one or two, but now I see them everywhere. I did try putting in some bumblebee snails like I mentioned previously to try and get rid of them, but I still keep seeing more probably because I only added two bumblebee snails and they're very small. So I might just have to add more bumblebee snails to try and make a bigger dent in this snail population. But worst comes to worse, I just add more putty. <laughs> All right, so now you might be wondering what's on the to-do list for this tank right now. Well, currently we have some light upgrades on the way from Neptune, not the planet, the company. Right now I am running two Radeon Gen 5 fixtures and we obviously like them a lot considering we have a couple hundred over all of the farming tanks here. Still, I think I need more coverage on this tank, especially considering we are using this egg crate on the top to prevent any fish from jumping out. Despite egg crate obviously being mostly holes, it does prevent some light from getting in. The plan was to add a third Radeon light, but a little while back, a sales rep from Neptune came over for a site visit and talked to Than about their lighting fixture. They are the Neptune Skies, and I think they will add a bit more light dispersed throughout the tank. This light is a larger footprint than what I have currently and could also be another solution for my failing pectinia issue. Maybe it just needs more light. As for the current lights on top of my tank, it took no time at all for the guys to allocate them over the top of some SPS farming systems that could always use more light. They will be put to good use elsewhere, no doubt. And obviously, we will be adding more corals in by the next time you see me, so that'll be a great new addition as well. All right. That's all I have for you guys for this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. So until next time, happy reef. Oh, wait, I forgot to tell you something. I'm actually going to be adding acros into my tank next time. So see you next time, happy reefing.